of the 10 minute caps reading. I slipped up on that, so um, I'm being asked to do it as if I was there, and I'm going to do that. So this is the little uh, segment that I had planned. Um, back in the 70s, I lived uh, over the other side of the mountain from New Paltz in Allegorville, and one evening I got a, there was a knock on the door, and it was this friend of mine who I hadn't seen in a few years, and she been married to a uh, high school friend of mine and she was in uh, remission from cancer and was traveling around with a backpack on her back seeing people and uh, so um, we had a meal and the next morning she left and um, she gave me this book which is a literary journal called Spit in the Ocean that was edited by Ken Kesey and um, the topic in this issue was old in the streets and every decade now that I read it it means more so I'm going to read some poems from that and then some of my own the first poem is by a guy named Ray Andrews it's called a dream for a quarter I bought his dream for a quarter at the second hand store I couldn't resist. There was too much breath in it and lung-loving labor. All those scrolls and angles and the workmanship. Only understanding hands filled with dreams could have done it. I want him to know I appreciate and love it. I still don't know what it is. Next is a poem um, by Margaret Burgeon, and this is kind of about senior citizens, maybe, uh, you know, a couple of generations ago, I think. It's called How to Grow Old Gracefully. Have a blue rinse with sausage curls and the teensiest bit of teasing. Develop a sad, knowing smile. Call everyone dear. Wear soft pastel fabrics that conceal all evidence of shape. Be always agreeable and never express an opinion. Master a quizzical expression for those rare discussions when sex is mentioned. It will appear you are having difficulty recalling. Oh. Tote your needlepoint everywhere even if you don't know how to punch the damn thing. Join a senior citizens club and learn to appear attentive while sleeping. Never show interest in younger men. Overtures towards the opposite sex belong only to senior citizens with Y chromosomes. Save some of your social security allotment for booze. You'll need a couple of belts before you go to the family Sunday dinner where you will be offered, at most, a glass of sherry. <laughs> if you don't have a doctor or need one, refer to an imaginary one by his first name. Your ailments must all be mysterious and serious sounding. Attend as many funerals as possible, even if you don't know the poor departed soul. Hang in there as unobtrusively as you can. The next one is by John A. Weigel, and it's called To a Friend Recently Dead Forever. A lady doctor, tired of studying the living, interviewed 500 dying patients. Most, she said, were muddying the limpid flow of destiny by lying to themselves about their cases. Death, she reasoned, should neither be feared nor hated, just as natural as one's first breath as one's last. The lady further stated in terminal cases she could clearly see four progressive stages. In a, wor in a word, the first is no. Second is a plea, presumably unanswered. Then quickly third comes panic, followed by the fourth and last resignation.
blast. Such silly stuff. How is dying really done? Let me, alive, count the ways. None. And the next last one from the book is by Eve Merriman. This is called Ice Creepers. Aren't you fearful you'll slip and fall? I asked the old lady tripping along alone on the ice glazed path. Not anymore. My man went before. And I'm old enough to be long gone dancing on my own grave. So what if I break a hip or leg? Don't bother to save me at all. Please, at all. Being afraid is for the young with life still ahead. They're the ones you should worry for who may be sent to war instead of taking their years making love in a sweet downy nest of a bed. Watch over them. Try to keep them safe and whole. Besides, she said, I've got my creepers. Such a ridiculous baby name, she laughed. They're metal prongs you attach to each sole. Look, she lifted one heel and a piece of steel flashed a bit in the white winter sun. Then she put her foot down and went stamping on, singing the rest of her song, Ching Ching. The metal underfoot makes a nice chirpy sound, crunch, crunching the ice like twigs, like flowering sprigs, like the crunchable bones of small baby birds and the very old loners like me. Ching Ching, Ching Ching. She sang as she danced along over the frozen ground, ching ching all the way to the dark open sea. And um, I'm going to read something of mine now. Um, it's called Thoughts on Aging. I wrote the first section probably about 12 years ago. Since then I've added different sections that I thought kind of went with it and sometimes I've added things just because I couldn't think of a name for them. So this is called Thoughts on Aging. It is gentle now. It has to be. The surface is so much thicker. The loam reaches down for miles. It needs soft rain to seep. Roots grow slower with time, but are deeper than action, courage, pride. The sun rises over empty buildings, broken windows, dark frown, life inside awoke to nothing, children run away. Fall is bright and frail, dry yellowed paper rests so many questions. Each time hummingbirds wings complete a cycle Summer movement ceases. The nectar has been a sweet gift. Now sleep. The cloak is lifted. The storm subsides. With blue skies, what happened a few minutes earlier is clear. If we could reach backwards and pull the clouds to the north, the beam of light would collapse. Storms happen. Lightning strikes. Tongues say the unimaginable, tears matter, and shelter us now. What's missing is small, but follows the seasons like a marked trail, a spider's silken anchor thread, seen in flickering light against tree bark, stretching between two unknown points. Oh! The sacred sound I hear is here, near. Near here is the sacred sound I hear. Oh. And then the last one is actually got a name. It's called In Accordance with the Nature of Things. I dreamt of the freedom of vines that grow where direction guides them, bearing fruit from seed for winter wine and jam for as long as necessary, and nothing more. And I kind of tried to write this as if it was vines, but oh, I... Nice. So, and that's it. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Yay!